Hello everyone. <coughs> so today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, justice as an approximation of equality, a relative equality. Now, what we see as right and fair um, is derived essentially from an ancient uh, sort of comparison between groups, between one individual and another, and another in a relation based off a power exchange of domination and submission. Now, so I'll take a few uh, analogies to go through this idea and uh, how exactly it works, but um, uh, first I just wanted to say uh, that the good, the people who are good in a sense, are those who are able to requite uh, good with good and bad with bad. It seems somewhat circular, but this is essentially the case. The bad uh, are already in this case uh, powerless in a sense, because they are bad because they are not able to uh, to requite that the good with the good and the bad with the bad. So just in the sense that I uh, say uh, a king would or some powerful figure, or at least you know you could look at it in an internal way. The, the saintly man, for example, who uh, uh, internalizes all sort of uh, or explains all internal conflicts to himself as like a, a battle between angels and demons, and thus uh, his virtue is the product of sort of uh, um, a reconciliation of these angelic and demonic uh, forces, which, or at least that's how he uh, explains it to himself. Um, so let's take, for example, uh, two armies on the battlefield, just to go back to what this idea is, what I mean. So let's say there was one minor and inferior army facing up against a superior army, maybe twice their size, something like that. Now, if it was a death match, a fight to the death, uh, the smaller army would uh, definitely be destroyed. They don't have a chance, they're going to be cut down to the last man. But, even though you would say, at this point, um, the battle is over before it's even begun, because they don't stand a chance, they could still uh, fight to the death and inflict serious damages on the enemy. And thus, uh, the powerless in this exchange, this are seemingly powerless, the people who are at the peril of, uh, of their enemy, already have a relative power, a relative equality. And the understanding in this analogy that uh, you know, the small army is going to inflict damage on us if we try to cut them down to the last man might result in some sort of agreement being made. Uh, the inferior force might become uh, suzerains, you know, servants, or they might have to pay tribute in some sense, but they might you know, give away their weapons and uh, remain, keep their lives. And, become slaves in a sense, which one might say is uh, a relatively greater power than uh, the, the alternative option which would be death, destruction. Now um, let's take another example, the master and slave uh, relationship. So say for example a uh, person was enslaved, um, they have four options really apart from, you know, remaining a slave. They could run away, they could fight back and try to kill their master, they could refuse to work, or they could kill themselves. Now, these are pretty uh, measly options, one might say, but nevertheless, uh, it means that the slave has a relative power over his master. The master probably loses out in profit if the slave kills himself, one might say. And so, uh, there is a relative equality here, which uh, which means that the master will then uh, um, give a certain food and uh, and shelter and whatnot, and sort of relative licenses to his uh, slave, so that they could uh, um, have a harmonious relationship in some sense. And in fact, all concepts of justice, the legal system, uh, as well as uh, virtue and whatnot are of uh, a social origin. They come from an ancient sort of uh, 
social origin, which is all built upon a power exchange. <clears throat> it seems somewhat uh, harsh and cruel, but uh, in reality it's quite normal. Um, and uh, uh, the powerful in ancient times you are uh, the ones with the ability to equate good with good and whatnot to say um, that this good deed over here is equal to another deed over there which is uh, one fundament of the origin of justice and at the same time they can also say um, you know we must concede in this regard to uh, to a certain uh, powerless individuals because you know ultimately the they have a relative power over us as well. And so following on from this, what exactly are the implications for, say, an egalitarian justice system? Because all justice systems are built upon equality. And to try go further and say that the justice is unjust because um, it isn't equal enough, you are basically implying that uh, the relative power of the, the suzerain, in this case, of the subset uh, um, of the weak, uh, is actually greater than uh, what people often think it is. So, for example, if you say um, a certain racial minority um, need to be put on the same pedestal as, uh, say, uh, the racial majority, because they have the same cognitive ability, well, you're basically implying that they have the same cognitive abilities, they have the same... Uh, uh, sort of moral capacity and whatnot, and then it would stand to say that uh, an examination must be underwent, must be undergone um, to verify this. Because if, for example, the justice is unjust, it re it implies that uh, that the suzerain already has a relative power, which for some reason isn't being recognised. So, for example, to go back to this analogy, say, for example, uh, the general is, uh, orders his men into battle, he says, we're not going to talk with the enemy first, we're not going to establish terms, we could cut them down to the last man, we have ultimate power over them, we're the master, they're the slave, so let's just go and kill them all. And then halfway through the battle, he's lost, you know, a thousand men, and, uh, you know, his cavalry have, uh, have suffered losses and whatnot. He's running out of ammunition, and, uh, and what have you. Um, suddenly then, uh, uh, he might say, hang on a moment, we didn't evaluate the relative power of the, of the weak, of the, of the slave, of the submissive, in this, uh, in a sense. Uh, we undervaluated it, and thus, uh, an egalitarian, uh, attitude is necessary. We must understand that, uh, these people are not what we once thought they were, um, they are, since, more equal to us than we, uh, than we imagined, and that is a sort of an authentic egalitarianism. But sort of a, a false or erroneous egalitarianism is sort of the will for equality without that equality ever actually being evidenced. Without actually seeing a proof that there is a relative power among the lower type, say, uh, the suzerains, but still sort of through some sort of moral volition, uh, wanting that uh, power to exist, and thereby sort of um, acting in concomitance with this conception that it actually does exist, when in reality it doesn't. So that's uh, just a quick uh, idea on um, yeah the uh, the relativity of uh, of equality that's that's behind all uh, systems of justice and uh, how uh, systems of justice are all evolved from uh, power relations.